I don't feel like I have one guest. I feel like I have two because this particular guest of mine came with the Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess I was already an artist by then. I was getting paid at five years <laughs> to sing because people would give me 10 cents, 20 cents, you see. So, yeah. I I mean, uh, stars are born. I, I, I know, guess, that's right. I guess, I guess <laughs> I was just born like that. I mean, the fact that you are anointed does not mean that you are appointed. So I thought I was anointed, hence I decided to appoint myself. Mm -hmm. Gandhi, I had to work on the anointing. And you were telling me that you have about 17 awards. Yeah, I think 17 to 19 awards. Oh, really? <laughs> no. And how many of that 17 to 19 can you name? If, if you have a calling, there's no way you can run away from it. It will always pull you towards this direction. So that's what happened to me. Welcome to Conversations with Garabo, and I'm your host, Garabo Baloi. And here, we talk to people from different walks of life, and they tell us about how they got to where they are today. Today is a very special episode to me personally, because I don't feel like I have one guest. I feel like I have two, because this particular guest of mine came with the Holy Spirit, okay? <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> I have the ultra talented, multi award winning gospel artist, Dagi Ndo. Hi. Uh, <laughs> mm, uh, I think that's what I should say. Well done. Well done. That's what you said. <laughs> uh, yeah, good afternoon and mm. greetings to your viewers. Thank you so much for having me. I just want to add a disclaimer uh, my vendor bundles end right okay. there. Okay. No, noted. <laughs> <laughs> no, dear. I am extremely inspired by your story um, because you're you're extremely talented, and I know that because I have actually um, seen you work um, with my own eyes. I have, and you don't know this, yeah. but yeah. I knew you back. Okay, when when is back? <laughs> Like 10 years ago, ten when years you used ago, to come yeah. to my church and sing, and every time you came, you were a special guest, you Which know. Which church is that now? It was formerly known as Agave CWC. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah, well, well that's, that's, that's a home church because the pastor, we come from the same village. Mm. And even Mam Fundisi, mm. uh, from there, we come from the same village in Fender. So mm. for me, it was just like visiting home. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's actually my home as well. Okay. <laughs> and that's how I actually know you. Oh, great. Thank mm. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, yeah. uh, when you were young, did you know that you were good at singing? Because let's be honest, everyone thinks so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think I knew. I knew because when I was already five years old, that was just before I started uh, uh, school. I would I would just stand by the gate at home and when I see people passing, then I start singing so that they can give me 10 cents or something and go and buy ice block or whatever. You see, so I think I knew because I would take advantage of my voice just to have an audience of people uh, uh, around me. So wow. yeah, I think I knew from You that. were a young entrepreneur. I, I guess I was already an artist by then. I was getting paid at five years <laughs> to sing because people would give me 10 cents, 20 cents, you see, so yeah. I hope we won't have to pay yeah. you to sing for us today because I will definitely ask you to sing. We'll see about that. <laughs> so not everybody gets paid for what they do when they do it well, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to know 
how did that decision, what was the thought, the thought process behind wanting to become a gospel artist? And why not just an artist? Yeah, well, uh, I think when I was young, I grew up in a Christian family. So the only music that we were allowed to listen to was gospel music. If I come back home singing um, another song which is not gospel, I would get a hiding. So it was not nice, you see. So um, I grew up like that and gospel was like the only music that I know. And I thank God for my parents for, for, for doing that and for being that strict because they were instilling something in me. Mm-hmm. And then now when I wanted to be an artist, the first music that I recorded in studio was R&B. So I was, I was singing love songs. So fortunately, we didn't release uh, those <laughs> songs. I remember we had about seven songs. Okay. You see, but I thank God that we didn't release them. So that was the first time I recorded in studio. And after the, uh, we were done with the music, I realized, no, man, this is not me. This is just not me. It's not my calling. And when I started doing gospel, I felt in place. I felt, you know what, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I thank God that... Um, I realized my purpose then and my passion then. And for me, gospel is more of a calling than a choice Mm. Uh, because I had a choice and the choice didn't work, but the calling always uh, subsides uh, your choices. If if you have a calling, there's no way you can run away from it. It will always pull you towards this direction. So that's what happened to me. So yeah. was there a particular reason why you didn't release those songs or did you just decide that you didn't want to do it anymore? No, the reason was because I just felt it was not me. I couldn't release something that does not represent me to people. So hence we didn't release it because it. what would it be? I felt like, I know, this is not me. Yeah. It was just music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I want to know, yeah. did you find it difficult to have a, a known, have, have a presence in the gospel music industry? Because it's quite a saturated industry. Yeah. Mm. Well, it was not easy. I think, um, especially for me, uh, being a vendor, uh, speaking artist, or uh, most of the time I would write a couple of songs in my language, which is Chivenda. And at that time, 20 years ago, when I came into the industry, people were not ready to consume Chivenda. Mm. You go to Eastern Cape, you go to KZN, you go to Northwest Mpumalanga, and you sing in Venda. Mm. People just sit down and they ignore you. Mm. So um, it was not an, 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 an easy journey back then. But for me, it's a challenge that I took upon myself and now it's working for me mm. because I decided to learn to sing in all these other languages to say, okay, because I love what I'm doing and I want to, to minister to these people, if I go to KZN, let me have a Zulu song. Mm. If I go to Eastern Cape, let me have a Kosa song. Mm. If I go to Northwest, Sutu song, Pumalanga, Swati song. So I learned to sing in all South African languages. Mm. So if you go to my album, you will find probably about six, seven languages in one album. Mm. So all my albums are just like that. When I do my album, I make sure that I have all the languages. I cover everyone. Mm. So the challenge for me became an advantage now because not a lot of artists can do that. If it's a Zulu artist and you listen to the album, it's just Zulu songs. If it's a it's a Sutu artist, it's just Sutu songs. But if you listen to Taki, you're going to hear Sutu, Kosa, Zulu, Swati, mm-hmm. even Shona at some point. In my next album, I want to do a Swahili song. So that has taught me to learn uh, African languages and to embrace being African as a whole and not just about being Venda. So I sing in all languages now. So for me, that was the challenge coming into the industry. But having conquered that challenge, I can say that I have found my place in the industry. I'm comfortable with who I am in the industry. I'm not uh, at all in any competition. I don't even want to involve myself in that because I know what God has called me to do. Mm. I know who I am. I'm very comfortable in my space. And I know most people actually start off in a group 
or in a choir, and then they branch off on their own. Yeah. So what gave you the audacity yeah. <laughs> to already start off on your own as an individual? I mean, uh, stars are born. I, I, I know guess, that's right. I guess, I guess <laughs> I was just born like that. I mean, at five years old, I already knew that I have something in me. And for me, I, I, I've never, like, for me, I've never found myself, like, wanting to be in a group or wanting to be part of Joya's celebration. It has never been any dream of mine. I just felt like I'm an artist. And that's what I'm going to do, because I believe that God has called me for a specific purpose, and I'm going to follow that. And it's been working out so well for you. Um, Lately. Uh, <laughs> oh, are, you, are you saying it took a while? Yeah. No, definitely. Mm. I think my breakthrough only came around 2013, and I released my first album in 2003, so 10 years later. Yes, yes, so, so what yeah. was going on in those 10 years that yeah. you think was holding you back? Yeah, I think um, it's probably one of the two things or both. And the first one would be the fact that it was not yet my, appoint my appointed time. Mm. And that is the mistake that we make a lot uh, uh, with gospel. Mm. Because you are anointed and you sing at church and people cry and people come in like, yo, you are singing very well, you should record. You think that you should go and be an artist. Can't you know, the fact that you are anointed does not mean that you are appointed. Mm. The fact that you are anointed does not mean that you are appointed. So I thought I was anointed, hence I decided to appoint myself. Mm. Can't you? I had to work on the anointing. Mm. I had to work on the character so that when God lifts me up, I can still uh, stay humble. I can still be and know who I am because... Uh, you know, sometimes when God lifts you up, then pride starts to kick in, which is the downfall of a lot of artists mm. or a lot of superstars. You get what I'm saying? But uh, uh, there's a saying that uh, uh, my mentor, Bishop Benjamin Dewey, always says, he says that talent will take you to the stage, but character will keep you there. So you can have the talent and it will take you there. But if you don't have the character, obviously there's nothing that will sustain you. Mm. So for me, the 10 years were building my character the 10 years were making sure that even how far God can take me, I still remain humble and still remain the same person. Mm. So for me, when it was happening, it was not nice. But when I look back now, I realize that it was necessary for me to go through that season because now that everything is falling into place, I realize that I have the character to sustain me. Mm. Yeah. And you have been highly favored now as of late, mm. and you have been busy, you are booked and busy. Like, there is always something <laughs> yeah. to announce. Yeah. Every five minutes, yeah. you're saying something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I know that um, my mom loves you. Thank you so much. She, Hi, actually, <laughs> <laughs> she actually went to see you this past weekend. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. Yes, she went with her best friend, and uh, she came back and showed me all the videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for the support. <laughs> and you have something yeah. else coming up this weekend. Tell yeah. us about that. Um, well, sure. There's a lot that I'm doing this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a function at mm -hmm. the University of Malanga with the students there. So that's what I'm doing on Friday uh, afternoon, Friday evening. We're back in Gauteng. There's a worship night that I'm doing. Uh, Saturday, we are in Middleburg. There's a revival a uh, night that I'm doing in Middleburg. And then Sunday, we are launching um, my best friend's uh, uh, new album, Colin Maluleke, is launching at his church, Goshen City. So that's what we're doing this weekend. So, yeah, it's going to be a lovely weekend. I'm excited about it. Wow, I think that there's a deeper lesson to be learned here about patience. Yeah. And definitely um, the importance of grounding yourself and the importance of involving God yeah. and realizing that you're not in control. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. So I love to see this for you. Um, you. I know that there are things that are going on this month, next month, actually. Yeah. I, <laughs> I would love to know what they are, but I'm pretty sure yeah. it's going to take us the whole day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think actually I, would, I was looking at my calendar mm -hmm. in the morning and I'm Fully, full, like fully booked. When I say fully booked, I mean fully booked. They say this, how I was explaining my weekend now, it's how my weekends are until end of October. 
So there is no Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that I'm free until end of October. You see, so if we start mentioning everything, it's going to take a lot of time. Wow. But but there's a tour that we are doing also mm -hmm. with Spirit of Praise. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the 27th of July, we are in Swaziland. On the 2nd of September, we are in Durban. Okay. And then on the 2nd of, of is it December, we are in Pulukwane. So I think people can take note of that tour. And then I'm also planning my, last year I was turning uh, 40 years old. Wow. So, so I did a birthday celebration. We had about 5,000 people sold out. So we're doing it again this year on the 29th of December, uh, TT41. So Daki turns 41. Oh, wow. In December, we're going to have about 41 artists. It's an all-night event. So again, we're looking at about uh, selling out 5,000 tickets again. So people must be ready for that. And I'm, I'm grateful to God that people came, some people came from Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. some people came from Swaziland, Cape Town, Durban, all over the country, people came to mm -hmm. support that event. So for me, that's the main thing that I'm doing this year. And then next year, uh, probably in March, I'm looking at recording my next live DVD at the Sun Arena in Pretoria. Didn't you just put out an album like five minutes ago? I put out, I released my latest album in 2021 okay. uh, in March. Mm -hmm. So it's been over two years now. With but that's album. not long. That's not that long. You know, people wait. Artists. It's very long. Is it? Two years, it's a long time without an album. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, so we have to work on on, on, on something new mm -hmm. uh, because I'm sure people need new songs and I think mm -hmm. I'm ready also. I've written a couple of new songs. So, yeah. Have you? I'm excited about it. Okay, that. how's it looking so far? Yeah. Is it's it looking well. good? And, and imagine, I mean, by, by the time we record in March next year, it will be three years. Mm. That's true. That's true. Yes, so it mm -hmm. will be due. I just want to say a side, a side note. You don't look a day over 30, by the way. Like, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm turning 41. So. No. Thank you so much. Yeah. God did good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the grace of God. I cannot take any credit. Mm. Maybe I, maybe also my parents. Yeah, maybe good, maybe, genes, maybe. good genes for my parents. <laughs> so I, I can't take any credit for that. Mm. You see, I don't know. But yeah, thank God. <laughs> and speaking of such, yeah. you also passed off those good genes onto your children. I I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I have I, I have two boys, and mm -hmm. and and I think they look like their mother. So I'm not sure. How old are we your sons? See, we'll see. The other one is seven. The other one is four. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh okay. You're raising kings. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's exciting. It's it's a beautiful journey, man. I'm enjoying it and it gives me purpose also. Um, mm -hmm. It gives me a reason to work hard, to go out there and hustle and grind because mm -hmm. I know that there are people that are looking at me for their existence and God mm -hmm. has trusted me with them, you see, so that I can look after them. So I, I thank God for, for, for these blessings, man. And at the same time, when I'm taking care of them, God is taking care of me. You see, so I think I thank God that he brought uh, those blessings into my life so of that course. he can also bless me. <laughs> but yes. on a little bit of a sour note, yeah, yeah. Um, you did recently go through a divorce. Yeah. So now that uh, that had happened, and I'm pretty sure it's not something that you had planned for, yeah. you know, I wanted you to comment on the stigma that's attached yeah. to um, divorce and Christians, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. there's some negativity around it that Christians shouldn't get divorced. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's not recent. I mean, it's been four years uh, now since, uh, since I went through that. And I don't think, for me, I don't think divorce is good for anyone. Even, even people that are not Christians, I don't think they're supposed to divorce. Uh, so even, I don't know why it's always, or people always say it's not good for Christians to divorce. It's not good for anyone mm -hmm. to divorce. I'm, I'm one person who does not like divorce. And, and unfortunately in this case, uh, it's not just me as an individual alone uh, against an object. It's me and another person. Mm. So if the other person does not see eye to eye with me and they want to go ahead with that, obviously 
I can't control that. And you cannot force someone to stay when they don't want to stay. You see? So for me, I, I, I mean, I love family. I love being married. And when I got married, I was getting married forever. That, that was my plan. But things happened and this happened and we are here now. But I am 100% against divorce and I will always be against divorce. Okay. Yeah. But it hasn't been all doom and gloom yeah. because we have to pay homage to the success of your career. Yeah. yeah. And you were telling me that you have about 17 awards. Yeah, I think 17 to 19 awards. Oh, really? <laughs> no. And how many of that 17 to 19 can you name? <laughs> well, I know that I've got two awards for best dressed gospel artist. Okay, now. Um, yeah, I, I love those because, <laughs> because I believe cleanliness is next to godliness. I know that's yes, right. So, so I try to, to be clean when I go to people. Um, it makes it easier for them to receive you when you are presentable. Mm. So I know I've got two of that. I know I've got about two or three best male artists uh, from the Crown Gospel Awards. I do have best gospel album, about two, two albums from the Crown Gospel Awards. I do have, um, I think, best worship from, from the Crown Awards. Mm, I, all in all, I think I have about seven, eight Crown Awards. Okay. And then I have about four Ingoma um, uh, Awards, which is uh, the Independent Gospel Music Awards. Uh, I do have the Artist of the Year, I have the Song of the Year, and I wow. have the Album of the Year from there. I do have the Metro FM Award uh, for Best uh, Gospel Album, which is the only gospel category that they have. Mm -hmm. So I do have an award there. Um, I do have a fame award for for <laughs> for one of the uh, most influential people from Limpopo. Mm. Um, I do have the Mzanzi Gospel Award. Um, what else do I have? I think that we've gone beyond. Yeah, yeah I was no, I, last year. Last year I was nominated at the summer <laughs> at the summer awards. Unfortunately, I did not win, but. Thank God I was an, I was nominated. I believe that's the only award that uh, is not there uh, mm -hmm. on my cabinet, and I'll, I'll, I'm, at least it gives me reason to still work hard of so course. that I can have one of those. Well, let me let me give you um, another <laughs> award. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go back, and production is going to count how many awards that was, and if it is over. 19, yeah. we'll give you your 21st okay. award okay. for the best guest oh. on my show, okay? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I, I watched the podcast. Have... I don't think I'm the best guest. <laughs> uh, the other guests that you had were like proper guests. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a gospel artist. What am I going to say? That? <laughs> okay, the best was, was also gospel nervous. artist that thank we've you. had on this show. Thank you. Yeah, Because I don't want y'all to be mad at me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That I can take. Mm. Yeah. Well, we don't have anything to give to you right now, yeah. but um, it's there in spirit. Yeah, I receive it. <laughs> yes. I receive it. <laughs> but Thank anyway, so yeah. Um, thank you so much yeah. for gracing us with your presence. Thank you for having me. And thank you for um, supporting our little small business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, this is not small. Um, <laughs> obviously, now when it's starting, it might look small. But it's not small. I mean, when I started, when I listened to my first album, I still sound the same with how I sound now. Mm. And back then, no one paid attention. Mm. Said, but I'm still the same guy. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So it, I look small, but I was already where I am mm. right now because I still sounded the same. You see, so you are not small. It's just that for now, maybe there isn't a lot of people that are paying attention, but you will still be doing the same thing and just improve it. On, and you, you, are, you are big already. I just want to confirm, you know, um, I last saw you perform a couple of years ago. Yeah. And then um, just recently, I saw you perform at um, my late friend's funeral. Yes. Um, yes. Unfortunately. 
and you sounded exactly the same. Thank you. <laughs> I have to say, yeah, yeah. he sounded exactly the same. The difference is people didn't pay attention <laughs> then, now they are paying attention. So same thing with the show. Mm -hmm. When you have grown and you are big, uh, it means that it started here, mm -hmm. so you are already big. Thank you so much. And Actually, uh, I just want to also confirm another thing. Yeah. He really did come with the Holy Spirit <laughs> because he's encouraging me. Now I have a little Thank more you. faith. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, all, all you need is faith as small as a mustard seed. Exactly. Yeah. Like a mustard seed, like it's something like this. That's, that's how small a mustard mm. seed is. So mm. that's the faith that you need mm. that this is big and it will get to where you want it mm. to be. I receive that. Definitely. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, in any case, um, I'm going to DM you and maybe you can give me free tickets to your concert this weekend. This weekend? <laughs> yeah, probably it, it might be possible for okay. Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, let's, let's make it happen. I would love yeah. that. Yeah. And... Yeah. We're going to link um, everything down below where you guys can get tickets for all yeah. the dates that he just mentioned. Sure. And best of luck. <laughs> Thank you so much. To you. Thank you. It doesn't look like you need it, but... No, I do. Need it. You do? Yeah. For that <laughs> other award ne, that you're talking exactly about. Exactly. Like, mm. Come on. We have to have that one also. <laughs> yes. We need to add it. Make it 20-something. Make it 30-something. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Uh, I'm really grateful that uh, you had me on your show. Thank you. Yeah. And on that note, thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And always, from my heart to yours, hola. Thank <laughs> you.